Hello friends! Are you still looking for that perfect gift for someone on your holiday list who loves planting things? Well, stick around and I'll show you what I did with about $15 worth of new supplies and some repurposed wood from my basement. I made this project with four 2x4s and three pieces of 3 inch wide cedar. Earlier in the week this light actually fell out of the socket, so I did a quick repair before I began. We begin by gluing two of the 2x4s together. These are going to serve as the four leg posts. Woodworkers always use a lot of clamps. The remaining 2x4s got ripped down to 3 inches wide. These will be the top and the bottom pieces that hold in the slats. Next, I went and cut up eight 14 inch pieces of cedar. These are of course going to be the sides. The sideboards don't have to be ridiculously thick, so I took them to my table saw and I thinned them out to about 5 sixteenths. I love using push sticks. One of these I think is a Wood Whisperer design, and the blue one is a Matthias Vondel design. Check them out. Resawing takes a little bit of practice to get used to, but as you'll see, they turn out really nice in the end. This was the first chance that I got to use the dado stack that I received for my birthday this summer, so I went ahead and I took out the regular blade and replaced it with my dado stack. Ah, oh, those dado blades just cut through the edges of these 2x4s like butter. Once the glue had dried on those 2x4s we were gluing up earlier, I ripped them down to 3 inches square and then I cut them to about 22 inches from top to bottom, drilled some holes, and uh, put in these leg screws. The leg screws were massive. They were a quarter inch by five inches long, so I didn't feel the need to glue. Instead, I just countersunk all my holes, and I made everything nice and tight and square as it could be. Here's where those dados come into play, as you see me sliding in the side slots. Whew, say that five times fast. By the time that you wrench in the 15th and 16th screw, you're pretty good at getting this set up. And I have to say, it feels really good once it's all in place. Once all of the screws were in place, I ended up giving every one of them a final tightening. As life goes, nothing is perfect, and the top of the planter is no exception. You can see how it's just uneven over the top. So, I took a trip into the wood storage room to find some scrap wood that I could use to cut up um, for a new facade. Oh, I can plane that and make it perfect. And then make it rain sawdust. <laughs> Anyways, once those were planed, I ripped them down to three inches wide, and I took them over to my chop saw, beveling them at a 45 degree angle, and from point to point, they were 21 inches long. After figuring out the exact layout that I wanted on the top of the planter, I went ahead and glued, laid them out, and applied some pressure. I think it's really handy to keep old bricks and tea kettles in one's workshop. I cut up the rest of these extra boards that I planed to about 18 inches and laid them in the bottom. No need to screw them in. The weight of the soil will keep them in place. Then I went ahead and I cut up that old trellis, but I don't know if I necessarily like the height, so I might redo it. Ta-da! Well, there you have it. I really enjoy making this planter. I've actually made it once before. I made it in the springtime for another friend and it took me about three times as long. Uh, so it's amazing what uh, the right tool for the right job will do, i.e. that dado stack. So if you enjoyed this video, be sure to follow the Midwest Man Mountain on your favorite platform below. Subscribe, like and share, and of course, I will see you next time. Thanks, friends.